Good morning YouTube, a new day, the project still goes on. At least we don't have any rain. Kinda warm today. What have you been up to? I've been riding on a daydream. Uh, we're gonna be in the 80s today. Uh, a little bit on the cloudy side and the humidity's climbed up a little bit, but uh, still pretty good. Today I'm gonna go ahead and tackle uh, this big power box. Uh, the transfer box back here I need to clean up. I, I showed Heidi last night and I told her, I said, unfortunately it's kind of dirty, but yeah, you saw that on my previous video. Uh, again, this is uh, automatic transfer relay. Uh, it works brilliantly. I, I, I just can't believe how, you know, I guess I just always expect something to go wrong. <laughs> That's my problem and uh, this this went awful well I mean it, it just did everything uh, that I thought it would it went together the right way everything is just perfect so far so knock on wood and uh, hopefully we don't have any issues so this transfer deal is um, the original 1992 mag magnatech I believe it is um, and I can't remember the model number, uh, something like a 940-2 or, or something like that. And it, it's pretty straightforward. It's a 40 amp converter. Now talking with Progressive Industries, they say that you should have a converter uh, that's within 5 amps of what the rating is. And you, again, you can see this one says 40 amp. And it works. This one works brilliantly. I've never had a problem with our 12 volt power. Uh, we don't have any dimming or anything weird like that. Um, it makes a slight hum noise and uh, after reading a lot of the original literature that came with this, because I have the original manual and everything, it says that that was normal. Uh, that that hum was a, a normal feature of these things. Uh, you know, it's old technology though and these new smart chargers uh, are supposed to do a better job. I know this one puts out a little bit less voltage uh, whenever it's on max and it does go to a maintained charge and even the original literature it says there's no way that your batteries can be overcharged uh, but they do say check your water you know your your level and your lead acid batteries. I don't know if that's really going to be much you know I, that's really never been much of an issue for us um, I have that battery switch and I just cut off the batteries whenever I thought that maybe they were being charged you know too long for no reason when there was nothing going on so we have these AGMs and I want to address that because that's basically why I'm putting a new charger in there is because uh, you know having a different battery technology I wanted to make sure that I had a smarter battery charger that was going to potentially keep my batteries a little bit more safe but I want to talk about these AGMs. AGM batteries are still a lead acid design. It's just that they are sealed for the most part. However, there is a vent. I don't know if you could tell over here, there's a little tiny vent. And in the case of an overcharge or a situation where the battery gets exposed to more pressure inside the case especially under temperature reasons it will vent there's a two to four psi vent on it that will open up and allow hydrogen gas to escape these things are supposed to be vented now I shouldn't say all standards by marine standards they're definitely to be vented however for use inside of an RV you can kind of get away with them not being vented. I'm sure there's a bunch of people out there saying that's bad, hydrogen explodes, the whole thing. These aren't lead acid batteries. These aren't batteries that will always be venting and building up a lot of hydrogen. And to be honest, quite honestly, you could put lead acid batteries in here and it would be very bad, but uh, you could do it unvented. Uh, I do not recommend that at all. And I don't recommend the AGM batteries being unvented either. And we may vent them in the future. We may do some sort of a small ventilation thing to help with that. And the way hydrogen gas works is hydrogen gas is lighter than air. So if they do need to vent uh, and release hydrogen, 
it's going to float like helium would. So whenever you do any kind of a, a tube going out, you have to make sure there it's about six inches above the battery box that you make for these things to vent. Or you need to put some sort of a hood system on it so if they do vent, um, it goes up into the collection area and out of the tube. Um, but you have to have it about six inches because hydrogen being so light, it, it can be moved around relatively easy. Well, you don't want, uh, you know, outdoor you know, pressures or outdoor, you know, wind or anything like that to blow the gases back in. So that's what that six inches is. They figure that once that hydrogen has traveled up at least six inches in a tube, uh, the wind is going to have a hard time pushing it back down those six inches to get it to enter inside your coach. And again, if you've got a sealed box, uh, it definitely won't. So that's what I'm going to end up doing is mounting these underneath the the bench seat inside the RV and I'm not going to vent them and I've seen plenty of van dwellers and other people that do the exact same thing again I don't recommend it it's not meant to be that way you're supposed to vent them however I feel as if I'm going to be able to get away with it so I just want to be clear on that um, I've talked about it a few times I've had a couple people ask about it and yes, they're supposed to be vented on safe, you know, for safety reasons, but I'm not doing that. Going back to this, uh, the next thing I need to do is actually um, disconnect the power. And it's pretty straightforward. I, I mean, if you guys don't know what these things do, is basically take the electricity right there that's coming from either my generator or from uh, the shore power. But basically this plug however it's getting its powered and it converts it it converts it into 12 volt power you've got your you know positive and your negative cables and there's a ground cable back there that goes outside and grounds to the frame you got to make sure that you ground your converter and it's also a battery charger it will charge the batteries so it does all those things really well. Again, I feel bad that this one is in such great shape and it does such a good job. I think I might talk to my son about uh, potentially using it in his van and see what he thinks. Because I told him, you know, with this, if he gets into a campground, he can plug in and he's in pretty, pretty decent shape as far as uh, running <laughs> quite a few things and also uh, charging his batteries other than charging them with the alternator in his van right now he only has one battery that's worked on a, a switch over a disconnect switch that's underneath the hood that flips over a relay and charges his battery once he started but anyways let's go ahead and uh, work at this and uh, get this disconnected now you got to be careful with this old technology um, I don't ex I don't suspect any problems but when I first unplug it uh, I'm gonna give it a few minutes because uh, some of these things like to hold some energy <laughs> even after the fact even when they're unplugged well like anything else guys I'm getting sidetracked uh, once I was underneath there I thought boy it'd be nice to know how much space I could possibly have once this ovens out of here um, I highly suggest you guys get one of these if you're doing any kind of remodel uh, this is a Roberts head or Robertson head and it's uh yeah I mean it's it's invaluable for working on RVs because all these screws they have these square notches in the middle you can use a, a Phillips but it's so much easier because that square fits dead in the middle there and it just really locks on so believe it or not you're talking six screws that's all that holds your oven in um, you know disconnect your fuel line your gas line and then it's uh, just six screws and the thing comes out. You're gonna have uh, four up top that run into the cabinet and then two down below here that run up into the cabinet at an angle. And that's all this thing comes out at that point. So let me go ahead and wiggle it out and see what this looks like. I don't know how heavy this is. Oh, this isn't heavy at all. It's a lot lighter than the refrigerator. I should expect it. I mean, it's just the metal box. Oh, trying to get the gas line to feed through. There we go. Oh yeah, this is going to make it a lot easier to work on. Just make sure I don't scratch Heidi's paint job. 
She would kill me. <laughs> She'd be like, what are you doing? Yeah, that's not bad. Let's take a look over here. Yeah, removing the oven. Who would have thought? So you can see what it looks like in here. And I'll tell you, there's so much space um, that we're going to save or have. Um, what I'm going to most likely do is make this gas line uh, a little bit more manageable. It's funny because in a house, in a, you know, a house like ours, you're not allowed to have this much flexible line <laughs> like this. You, you, it's got to be mounted and it's got to be solid. And anyways, in an RV, I guess you can get away with it. So uh, what I want to do is go ahead and make a shelf in here for all this to sit and give us storage. And from what I can tell, if I move that box over a little bit, um, I'll actually have room in here for storage uh, for anything else I can think of. But I like I like the fact that uh, we've got room in here now. This is going to work out pretty good. Now, like I said, we are going to put a cooktop back in once we get a new um, countertop. We're going to put a um, a bigger countertop in, a smaller sink, and then just a cooktop. And we're actually entertaining the thought of using an indoor-outdoor cooktop to where I would make a shelf just a little bit lower here and uh, we would just store it. Again, Heidi and I have talked about this over and over again and we don't need four burners. We don't even think we need three burners. I mean, she's only cooked at one point, one time, uh, on three burners at once. Usually it's just two burners and as far as the sink we can go with a lot smaller um, and we've never used the oven. We tried and it did okay but it was more of a hindrance and again the RV so short there's no sense in having a stove in an oven. Um, so we'll have to see how this works out. Uh oh really got sidetracked. <laughs> I uh, decided to go ahead and take this cabinet top out today. I don't know how well that's going to work out, but I think it'll allow Heidi to do a lot better painting or a lot more painting, um, you know, as far as trim and that. You can see where the oven was. I don't think that she realized that. But, yeah, this countertop's got to come out. We've been talking about this since day one that you can see how much space is taken up by the stove and the uh, sink. It's just too much. I mean, I could imagine giving up maybe uh, this much counter space to sink but uh, the plumbing looks pretty straightforward in here uh, we'll have to change some adapters I'm sure and uh, when we go to a smaller sink you know change everything the way it's routed I think I have an idea how I want to do it but yep time for the countertop to come out now this will be a little bit tougher because again uh, these things are screwed into the wall you know after the fact so hopefully I can get to all the screws and none of them come from the outside I don't think that they do but you never know with these things so let me get in here and and wrench away but the sink was really light just to let you know really lightweight easy to remove the stove wasn't very heavy at all um, makes me think still that this side of the RV is definitely heavier than this side of the RV uh, with that little bit of weight because when that's got a full water tank, you know, that's 48 gallons. That's pretty heavy. The refrigerator's pretty heavy. The furnace, not so much. Uh, the toilet, not so much. But then you have this cabinet. But again, I think that has a lot to do with the awning and having the awning, um, you know, on this side of the RV and the two doors, uh, you know, that, that all adds weight. We're going to see if we can keep it balanced. Again, we're going to take the, uh, the batteries and move them over this way. All right, so looking at the plumbing, uh, looks like I might have to redo this whole setup here um, just because I think the new sink that we get may be a little deeper than the one that we current, you know, that we had. Um, and I noticed that this is all glued, which is fine. I don't have a problem with that. But if this was pointed in this direction or straight forward, uh, we would be able to use that shelf more without the fear of hitting that drain. So we're, we're definitely most likely going to have to uh, cut this off, uh, which I have a cutter. I think it can handle this size of pipe. Anyways, uh, cut this off and uh, replumb it from that point up to the sink. Uh, of course, using this uh, gray vent uh, for the gray tank, you know, that you got to have that. 
it's a, a negative pressure thing. So when you're draining your gray tank, there's a valve in here that opens up and lets the water go. Uh, same when you're draining your sinks. Um, it allows the water to drain, uh, you know, without bloop, 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 bloop gurgling, that kind of thing. <laughs> so yeah, that's, uh, that's where we're at right now, or that's where I'm at right now. I went ahead and got measurements for this. Looks like we're about 63, 64 inches in length and uh, just under two foot out. We could probably get away with two foot though. Uh, we probably will go with two foot now that I see that area down there. Probably be a good idea that it goes out past that a little ways. Um, but yeah, I think this is uh, still going to turn out really good. I think Heidi will be excited. Uh, the temperature is 81 in the RV and the humidity is only 59%. So. I haven't done anything as far as running the air yet. Um, and again, I all I was doing today was this power converter charger. So <laughs> you can see how things get really sidetracked. Now that it's, uh, you know, all this is out of the way, I can get a good idea of what I can, I can do. And I think, again, I'm going to mount the new one off to the side. So, yeah, let me go ahead and do that. Now, the nice thing is um, these power chargers, since I don't have any batteries hooked up, uh, like I said, other than the, the power that may be stored in here after it's disconnected, uh, once I unplug this, that's it. My 12-volt power, my 12-volt supply throughout the RV is gone. The power that is going to this is non-existent. There is no power going to this now. I mean, the only power it gets is when you plug it in. So let's go ahead and get this one out, and I'm going to compare it to the uh, one that I purchased, and we can get a side-by-side, -side, get an idea what these are like. Now, if you ever have to do one of these changes yourself, uh, don't fear, because there's not a lot to it. Uh, basically, there's a grounding lug that's back here that you just loosen up, and this hard copper line comes out. Uh, of course, you've already unplugged it from the wall, and then you just have a red wire and a white wire and uh, that's it in this case they don't have wires that run out but you can see the size difference and the weight difference I mean I can pick this up with pretty much ease but this one uh, I can't get my hand on it but it's kind of heavy <laughs> and that's because of all that copper winding that's inside there I need to blow this out really well um, it's uh, it's pretty dirty but there is a capacitor in there so you got to be careful like I said there's stored energy that's in here but yeah this one here um, just requires your positive and your negative your red and your black in this case the red and the white um, to uh, be connected uh, directly with these given terminals and again there's that lug for grounding and once that's done you just have to make sure there's good ventilation all the way around and you plug it in now in this case there is a, another feature that this one has and that's this uh, accessory port um, and what that does is allow you to plug in what they call a pendant let me show it to you you can see this is the pendant here and here's the plug looks kinda like an old phone plug but it's not and uh, once that's plugged in even though this is all automatic and will adjust the different levels of charge as the batteries need you can manually do this if you want uh, you have the boost mode which the light will be fully on normal mode is uh, blinking and then surge or storage mode is a short flash and again you can do that with uh, just pressing this button and holding it until those flashes happened with this wizard and his little crystal ball in his hand <laughs> so that's nice that's a nice feature so you may want to have access to that so you can plug it in and change things if you want but it's got a built-in fan and it's supposed to be much much smarter than this old monster that does a good job but it is an old monster in the future when we sell the RV we may take this with us it's so easy to change uh, we may want to uh, you know pull this out of the RV and put this old one back in and uh, you know that's on down the road uh, right now the plans to sell the RV obviously with all this work is not in the near future <laughs> I'm all hooked up and it was pretty easy and actually like I said there's so little room um, that's used whenever you go with one of these uh, it's going to allow us to actually use this side if we want to for some sort of uh, storage which I may um, the fan has you know some room behind it for ventilation of course the front does too 
and there's a vent that covers this whole area up that will help ventilate that now if we build some sort of storage I'm not exactly sure how we would do it we'd probably uh, make a wall that went along here and then a shelf that was above so this still could vent itself uh, through the uh, bottom underneath the kitchen sink here you can see down in that area but uh, we'll figure that out as we move along and get on down the road now I don't have my batteries hooked up so I can't show you any kind of uh, charging information uh, as far as you know the voltage that it would be charging at but we can come over here and see what our supply says and uh, 1367 so let me turn on a light and see if that makes a difference these are LEDs so probably not eh, dropped it a little bit so it's working uh, it's very quiet uh, there is a slight sound that I hear occasionally from it um, it's kind of like a, it sounds like a a pipe leak like if you have seeping water out of like a connection or something it's real quiet though I can barely hear it and I've got pretty good ears for that stuff so uh, yeah I sent some pictures to Heidi showed her what uh, we were looking at here and of course she um, was real excited not <laughs> she said boy we're committed now it's like yep yeah, no kidding got the job done that's really all I was going to do today so let's see what comes up uh, later today or maybe tomorrow Yes, we finally got some warm weather again. I mean, it's been nice weather, but warm weather for sure. Uh, it's 86 outside and the dew points are about 67. Uh, so I've got the air running inside the RV. Again, because we don't have 30 amp out here. I went ahead and hooked up the generator and I'm testing it out again, just like before. Uh, I did put the exhaust pipe on it though. See it down there. And we got some shopping done. Yeah, check all that out. Um, the problem is with countertops is that they come with backsplashes now. Well, this inch backsplash is makes this countertop an inch too long. So I'm going to attempt to cut the backsplash off. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it, but hopefully I can. And we found a sink. That's a single basin, just like we thought. I'm gonna drill a hole in the center because we found a faucet that we liked that would not fit this, but I'm gonna make it fit. And uh, there's some trim work for the front of the RV to replace uh, part of that cabinet that I removed. I'm gonna make a shelf in there. And these two pieces will run the entire width of the front. So yeah, I'm gonna try to cut this and see <laughs> see what happens well it's almost perfect we knew he's gonna have to add a backsplash um, the problem is the backsplash that I cut off once you cut it off uh, which this is the furthest you know that I could have left it wide wise uh, this lip kind of holds it from going back any further so we'll get a backsplash that um, you know makes the transition here from the top of the cabinet up to the wall uh, I have to measure out for our new sink, which it's really nice. They gave us a template. And then, of course, we'll figure out for the cooktop. But, uh, yeah, I think this might work out. So we're going to end up returning our faucet, uh, but we like our sink. Uh, the sink is very deep. Uh, we did all the measurements underneath. Of course, I have to replumb, so uh, we're going to move some faucet uh, receptacles down there and not a big deal but we wanted to make sure this cleared this drawer the top drawer which it does uh, whenever it is going to be recessed in there uh, we were trying to determine which place to to actually put this um, we thought about um, well this piece of cardboard here although it's the template for the stove we're kind or for the uh, sink we're kind of using it for the stove um, to get an idea of how far the stove is going to be and you can kind of see how much counter space we're going to gain by going with this, you know, one basin sink. <coughs> Sharpie is just getting on my nerves. <laughs> so uh, we wanted to place this under the, the, the window so there was light always coming in. 
However, we talked about even doing this and putting it off to one side and then giving us all this counter space, but I think it's going to be beneficial for us to be here. That way we have food that's prepared or ready to go into the pan or whatever on a cutting board, a bowl, whatever. Um, it can go there. And we still have all this counter space over here, which we always, we had a little, we had about this much before, so that's going to be about the same. That's going to be real close to the same, but uh, this gain here is nice. Plus, you know, we're going to have a little bit on the lip, which that's not a big deal. However, um, even though we like this faucet a lot, uh, after we looked at a bunch of them, and it was inexpensive, uh, it was like 50 or 60 bucks, um, it's just not going to, it don't look like it reaches quite right. It just don't look like a kitchen so much. Uh, it says, right, we know that it's bath. I knew it was a bathroom. But we were thinking because it was such a small sink that it would stand out. And it definitely don't. So um, we're going to return it and go get a normal kitchen one. And uh, Heidi said something about a soap dispenser even. Alright, so here's the deal, guys. When they say use a skill saw, hey, that was my line. When they say use a skill saw to cut your holes, use a freaking skill saw. That, hey, that's my line. <laughs> yeah, use a skill saw. Um, I have a whole plethora of tools, like this thing I love. And this was good to make the initial cut. That, that did work to make the initial cut. However, then I tried to uh, use my body saw, which is basically an air-powered skill saw, but it's made for cutting sheet metal more than anything else. Um, let's see. Then I used the sawzall, or the uh, whatever you want to call it. And that does on okay on straight cuts, but it, the blade's not small enough to make the corners. So, yeah, that's basically the whole gist of this is uh, use what they say to use. Because Heidi ran down to her mom's; they had this skill saw forever. They were selling it at a yard sale, and it cut like butter. So, a few things to be aware of. There's going to be a lot of sawdust. There's going to be a lot of noise. It's going to hurt your ears. <laughs> Ain't that right? All right, guys. So the sink went in, but it gave us a fight. Um, that original cut that we made that was real nice in the size of the basin uh, was not correct. Um, what we were supposed to have done was cut. It's a dumb, dumb thing. <laughs> Shop for a good quality sink. Uh, this one here looks nice, but now that you are we've worked with it. We can tell that it's kind of a, a Rinky dink setup. Um, it's nice and deep. We do like that and uh, it's square but the clips that hold it on the underside they're a horrible design and What they want you to do if you're going to flush mount it is turn the sink upside down on the counter and draw a perimeter and then draw half inch in <laughs> half inch in all the way around and that's where you make your cut well why would they make a cardboard template for the little and they could have used the outside of the little cardboard template to make the big cardboard template that's needed if you're going to mount it flush so the next thing we're going to do, you can see here, this is our outdoor stove that we'll utilize when we're outside cooking because Heidi likes using the outdoor stove. This is our outdoor stove that we were given. Wow, look at all the dust. And uh, it works really nice, you know, as far as what it's going to be for us. And we actually entertained the thought of using that as our cooktop. And we, we still could, but the cooktop that we really like it's like four hundred dollars 
it's four hundred dollars for a two burner cooktop um, that you light with a match <laughs> or with a, a lighter. Do you have a problem lighting it with the lighter? Yes. You do. You wanted a piezo ignition. Yes. That's another hundred dollars. How about now? Probably not. <laughs> yeah, Heidi'd like to have me cut this down so we can make a counter thing for her, or a, a sink cover. I got some cutting to do on that to make that work. But yeah, this is gonna this is gonna do us good. But our like I said, it's all about counter space. And the nice thing is, is that real expensive stove top that we were talking about. Um, it's only 18 inches by 13 inches. For you guys that are watching overseas, I know you guys are awful thrifty with your small little tiny vans and little campers uh, that you have over there. And uh, one of those is the cooktops, having really nice cooktops. Uh, we don't have that. Um, we have one really decent cooktop, but it's going to be a pain in the butt to handle. So tomorrow, um, I'm going to have to try to plumb this as much as possible. And, uh, yeah, we have three-quarter round. I don't know if you guys can see that back here just sitting. Um, this is what we're using then to cover up all back here. Uh, that'll take care of that gap. So th that'll be nice. Our generator's been running all day on a propane tank, uh, except when we went shopping. When I get some way, they're closed. Oh, okay. Well, we're going to find something to, to munch on. I think what I'm going to do is uh, shut down for the day, but I can come back tomorrow and shoot some more video for you. Get It'll just be a blink of the eye, but Heidi will be at work, so Heidi, say bye. Bye. <laughs> bye. On vacation next week. Yeah, she's on vacation, so we'll be able to get more work done for sure, and uh, I can work on the front of the RV even more. So I'll pick it up here in just a little bit, so three, two, one. Boom. New day. It's not the next day. It's actually a couple days, but I had a lot of stuff going on. We'll talk about that. Oh, we got a package too. How nice. This came uh, post postal. Oh, it's a little heavy. I'm going to have to use both hands. We had rain last night. We had storms. Uh, the uh, day after that video that I shot, it wasn't so bad, but um, it was warm. It was kind of delightful, but storms last night and basically we've been making some small mistakes but before we talk about mistakes i honestly want to know do you guys get as sidetracked as i do I, it's like i have this whole cascade of thought that just pops up and in my case i was coming out to the truck to turn it around so i could utilize the tailgate to uh work off of it's kind of my workbench since the garage is such a disaster and i thought oh i don't want to fire up my truck because i need to check my antifreeze or actually my coolant because all I have is water in there because I've been making sure that I don't have any kind of an oil leak or anything that's getting into the coolant and I didn't want to use antifreeze even though I have all that antifreeze sitting ready to go I didn't want to use that to find out yeah I need to flush it and find out that there's something going on so I started flushing out the truck so I could turn it around uh, then <laughs> once I did that I'm like well I got the hose out already I need to sanitize the RV because we haven't been using the water because everything's been disconnected for a while, you know, while I do this work. So I went ahead and got some bleach, I went ahead and put in, filled that tank, and then I thought, well, I've got the hose out, so let me go ahead and start sanitizing the uh, tank on the truck because we haven't used it and there was a little bit of water in there, so now I'm filling that up. <laughs> See what I'm saying? It's like I'm getting all sidetracked. So I was just curious if you guys do the same thing. I mean, it's like I couldn't start my truck because then it would be hot and I didn't want it to be hot to turn it, you know, check the antifreeze. See where I'm going with all this? So as far as the mistakes, um, if you get a sink like this, realize that you're buying a bar sink. We knew we were buying a bar sink. Don't screw around and try to find uh, a faucet from a kitchen that's going to work because we bought a really nice faucet very happy with it i mounted it everything was going great we didn't like the fact that we didn't get a soap dispenser but we got this plug we were going to plug it off which we did and we mounted it and then once we put the sprayer on i couldn't wash my hands the sprayer came out to about here i was getting more water on the cabinet than i was here so it's obvious to see what we did there we pulled the this 
um, uh, spigot off and returned it. And we went and found a bar spigot, which it's upside down there. Of course, I'll leave the links down below for this stuff, but yeah, that's hopefully going to work. I finally got a measurement. It can't be any more than six and a half inches out uh, the arc um, for it to be correct. And, you know, we had to have it so tall, but we didn't want it too tall. Yeah. So today I'm going to go ahead and reinstall that faucet or a faucet <laughs> since the other one's gone. The good thing is uh, yesterday, other than mounting the faucet, I got all the adapters that I needed to, uh, well, let's go through this way. Maybe we can see a little better. I got all the adapters that you needed to go from this old style connection that they don't use anymore. That's not even PEX. It's something before PEX Grayson or something like that. And uh, I got the fittings that will connect to the faucet a lot easier. I got them mounted out of the way and I got all my drain set up. Um, and you can see, look how much more counter space we're going to have. That's going to be really nice because this is all on one side now. So again, I've got all this counter space plus we have a little bit here. Something we didn't. Now I did screw up Heidi's paint job in numerous places so we're going to have to fix that. Alright, so am I done? Yeah. Let's go over a few things. Um, the soap dispenser is kind of cool. I'm going to have to build some sort of a shelf though to hold that soap bottle or a mount because I really feel insecure with that bottle just hanging there. As we drive down the road, it's probably going to bounce. Um, the nice thing is, even though it seems kind of funky and cheap, um, this just comes out and you can fill your soap dispenser there. You can refill it. So I can build a shelf down there to hold, hold that. That's awesome. I like that this has full range. Um, something that uh, some of them didn't have. Again, you have to have a bar model so you get one that actually swivels. If you get like a bathroom model, of course it isn't going to move. The uh, hot is to the back, cold is to the front, and the sprayer has a few features. Of course you can adjust the, the spray you know, by just opening it a little bit or full blast. However, this is not full blast. This is what they call eco spray. There's a normal aerator spray. You can see there. And then you have this one, which is a harsh spray. And nice. I, I like the features because maybe we just want to rinse stuff off easily. That's what that's for. Uh, the handle's real nice and easy to get to. When your hands are dirty, you just kind of bump it with your wrist, maybe. Now, as far as the uh, connection, um, I had to cut off their connection and put a ferrule on there uh, because it was leaking. It was ridiculous. And uh, their lines are really long. They're, they're too long for what I need, but I'm glad that they are. That way, if it leaks some more, I can continue to cut off more. But the uh, cold water, it had one little single drip that I had to tighten, but the hot water, it, it continues, you know, it just kept on leaking. Uh, so I had to put a ferrule on there and retighten it. I turned on the hot water, I'm getting everything soft, the line soft and everything, and we'll see what happens, but so far so good. There's that soap dispenser, but driving down the road, you know, I'd be concerned about this, you know, just bouncing around. Kind of looks like a disco thing going on, don't it? Boing, doing, 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 doing. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm gonna build some sort of a strap um, or support underneath of this. Uh, just to hold it. It'll probably just be a simple strap. You know, I have some strap iron. Again, you can refill from up top here. So, other than you maybe not liking the soap that you have in there and it's going to mix with what you put in, uh, that's the only downfall. The, the other thing that I don't care for is uh, this drain that we installed. This stopper, even though it, it seems like a decent basket, um, they, they let it go down too far. Um, there's no way for it to to stay up and let the water drain at a faster rate. I, I don't know if you know what I mean, but basically the water um, drains so slow with this thing in there um, that it, it's just a bad design. I'm being really picky though. Uh, all I know is the sink is done and now we have something else wonder what it could be.